Cancer. Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. This is a, a tarot reading that will be specifically for Cancer Risings, but Cancer Sun, Moon, and Venus are welcome to join, as well as anybody else out there, the Cross Watchers. Uh, here on YouTube, I do general messages, so that means not everything I say will resonate with every single one of you out there. I welcome you to come into these readings with an open heart, an open mind, um, and your own uh, intuition, your logic. Uh, to separate the messages that resonate with you, that feel uh, guided towards you or for you, uh, but release the rest. If it doesn't seem to fit your circumstance or scenario, drop it like it's hot, assume it's going out to someone else. Uh, you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions, and that's about it, guys. Let's, uh, let's try and have some fun. I love re reading for my cancers out there, so let's do it. We're going to split the deck here. That felt like a, a good split. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on in your life, Cancer. These are weekly readings, guys, so know that in advance. <clears throat> Ooh, new travel opportunities and wish fulfillment in your long-term career goals. Uh, all right. <clears throat> and something from the past is calling you back. Uh, this sounds so unusual, but to uh, something about in a private space. In some sort of private space, something you used to do in private or in secrecy. And it's not anything bad. It's actually something that warms your heart. It's just some sort of something you do on your own. Maybe it's like you take a walk to that, that little lake down the street or you write in your journal. Something from the past that you used to do in seclusion or isolation, you feel called towards it again. Um, so it could be writing. It could be crafting. It could be, I don't know, it could be a million different things. It could even be singing. <laughs> I only sing in private. All right, bottom of your deck, five of pentacles. What up with that, Cancer? Let's uh, let's talk about it. So uh, let's let's start with the the really exciting news. I see wish fulfillment coming up in your tenth house of career, uh, public image, long term career goals. It does have to do with your finances, of course, um, but it's more sort of the the legacy you establish in sort of the external world versus your private life, which is where you kind of have this uh deliciously sickly not sickly like sticky sweet uh something really sweet soulmates coming back calling you to the past anyway moving on <laughs> i'm looking at your money houses here to determine where we're headed from here so Interesting. Um, if you are, and I, I am uh, speaking strictly professionally uh, in your daily routine, if, if you are collaborating with a Capricorn or you've just been giving a tremendous amount of dedication and focus into striving towards big career moves, uh, really thinking long term, almost I don't want to say obsession because that may seem in a healthy way, but the devil is down to business. He's uh, he's not your kind of dreamy, romantic, let's feel and be creative. He's like, no, let's like let's fucking buckle down and do the work. In a higher vibe, this is a great card. It's related to Capricorn, right? Capricorns, I sort of say, are the, the worker bees of the Zodiac because they rule the 10th house. They are all about that long-term futuristic goal. So if you've been wearing your Capricorn hat recently and just really nose to the grindstone and um, turning it out in a in a daily routine type way if you've committed to a yeah absolutely that word committed uh, to a routine to a daily maintenance to the regulation of your workload or your work speed and understand this is by no means undertaking more than you can handle it, it's understanding the the balance and your ability to succeed that is also dedicating um, a regimen to your health and body when you can mix and merge the two and you're taking good care of yourself and you're kicking ass every day on a daily basis at whatever skill or task you're committing to, even if it's not work related, something in your daily health routine. If you've been putting in the time and effort and again, honoring and respecting yourself, an obsession with not burning out too quickly, you have big things coming in, Cancer. I really, really like that. I think that's awesome. Um... So let's understand what is going on with that. So you have a lot of planets sextiling that your long-term career house, so your 10th house. Sextile is just a positive, harmonious aspect. It essentially, if you're looking at this, it means it's next to. So in your house of Taurus, which has a lot of planets in it right now, your 11th house is ruled by Taurus for my Cancer Risings. Anytime there's a stellium, a lot of planets, there's a huge focus being put in that area of your life. So this has to do with your friendship circles as well as larger groups of people. So if you are in a career where you, you cater a lot to many client groups or public speaking or anything online, 11th house has a lot to do, again, 
large groups of people, where are you going to find that? Certainly online, right? So if you have an online business it's, and you may be even like an entrepreneur or something like that, there's a lot of effort and time and it's not all fun and games. Like again, there's a commitment and an effort to um, transforming, bringing uh, waves of lightning bolts or, or shocking yeah, there could even be shocking news, but it's not all bad, but uh, announce, big announcements, something to large groups of people, that may be impacting this this wish fulfillment coming into you, or maybe it's vice versa. Maybe it's the opposite, uh, maybe it's the opposite way around. Maybe you're you make some big announcement and it sets you up for a new job offer or something like that, right? <clears throat> yeah, you have a right again, these are weekly readings, guys, and I'm mixing astrology with tarot. This is what I love to do, so I'm hoping that you guys gain something from it, but Right now in your house of money, you have kind of like my single ladies card. So because your 10th house is ruled by Aries, which is very independent, pioneering, self-starting spirit, whether you are an entrepreneur or not, in a sense, you may be tapping into that very independent spirit this week in your in your career life, in your daily work life, things of that sort. Um, I would say she's an excellent money card. One of my favorite money cards. She's uh, self-made. She, I always say she looks around and she can see quite literally the things she has been able to manifest for herself through her own hard work and labor. She's not lazy, but there's almost a sense of I can actually enjoy the fruits of my labor, the, the luxuries and the success that I have. No matter how big or small, I can enjoy them because I know I've done it myself. Um, so again, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, there seems to be a lot of, I would say a lot of responsibility falling on you right now. But again, if you have sort of this determined mindset of, I want this, so I'm going to put in the time and effort and I'm going to get ahead. You bet your ass you will. Look at you with the two nines. Two very, I mean, just look at these cards. They're bright yellow. They're happy. Um, nines are about endings of cycles. And I have to say with these, as opposed to maybe like the nine of swords or the uh, nine of wands, those cards can be tricky energies. I don't think there are any bad cards in tarot. They just simply are. But those cards tend to have an energy of like, ooh, something here is kind of like, it's time to wrap it up, like that kind of thing. This is more like, it's time to wrap it up because we've done the shit work, right? We've put in the time and effort and hours, and now it's like, we can enjoy, again, the fruits of our labor. There's wish fulfillment here. And I mean, I would say, keep in mind, these are weekly readings, so this doesn't have to be like the end-all be-all of like your 10-year plan. It probably won't be in a weekly reading. Unless you've been working on something for 10 years, then fuck yeah, that's absolutely what this could be. Um, but because, again, 10th house really does have to do with like long-term, long-term. Again, earth energy, Capricorn, putting in potentially years of, of work or... And I don't mean to make it uh, daunting or uh, this this sort of like, oh my God, I have to brace myself. Like I'm, uh, all I'm getting at is something really nice starts to come in for you. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is because it's being presented with a lot of very earthy Capricorn, dig your heels in the earth and commit energy, I wouldn't say this is a Cinderella story, Cancer. I think this is for my Cancer Risings out there who have put in a lot of time and energy. And again, there is an understanding of in order to achieve this, you don't need to break your back, but you need to love it enough to commit to a lot of time and energy. And you also need to respect your health and your body in order to maintain this lifestyle. There's a, a blending of the two and that's when you know you've made it. Because what's really important about this card too is she respects herself. She has healthy boundaries. Um, she doesn't get involved in any relationship, business or romantic, where someone tells her, um, what to do or how not to do something. Um, and it's not that there's an arrogance. There's proof by success. Well, this seems to be working for me. So who are you to come in and tell me that I'm not giving enough time to my relationships? And because, you know, she knows what she wants. I would put it that way. Of course, there's, there's balance that is necessary in all of life, but I'm just going to put it this way. Um, for my cancers who maybe you feel like relationships hadn't been the primary focus for the last, you know, months, years, weeks, whatever it is, if you have been putting that extra time into work, my goodness, is it going to pay off? Um, and again, I'm never saying you have to sacrifice one over the other. It's just, it just simply is, right? In, in tarot, these are the cards I'm being shown. So, I mean, I'll be honest, right now, your cards, my favorite right now is your money houses. Two, six, and ten, those look epic. Um, I don't mind the devil here. I'm going to admit, that, again, this is a complicated card. It has many connotations, um, especially because my Cancer Risings, your sixth house, is ruled by Sagittarius. So, 
there could be a, a stroke of good luck here because of your hard-earned efforts. Um, you know, tied to Capricorn, this can be a card that sort of represents Saturn, which has a lot to do with responsibility. If you're given responsibility and you take it like a champ and you're like, okay, this is my scenario, I'm going to make the best of it, you do. You do like... Yeah, I'm, I'm just reiterating what I've already said. This looks smoking. I'm uh, I'm very excited for you guys to hear what this could possibly be. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, let me see what where the story is leading me. We are going to talk about love and dating. I'm just making sure I can kind of get there organically. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's let's get into that. So, Cancer risings. So your seventh house partnership is ruled by Capricorn. So do you understand how the, these are possibly connected? There's a lot of Capricorn-esque energy presenting itself here to me right now. Um, so if some of you are waiting on a Capricorn, you may actually have one coming in. Right now, your seventh house of... Uh, now, this is long-term partnerships. So I do want to read for dating, but just to kind of give you a little flavor of what... If you're looking for a long-term uh, partnership, this could be work-related in that Capricorn is showing up, and that was definitely wanting to be seen in your work life. Uh, there could be a, a long-term work collaboration with a Capricorn. It could possibly be a marriage one, though I will say this. If it is marriage, it's something you've been waiting on for a while, or you've been thinking about it or contemplating it. <clears throat> it's not something that just comes out of nowhere. It's not to say you couldn't start dating a Capricorn, but that's not so much your seventh house. That's your fifth house. So we will talk about that in a minute. Right now you have healing going on in your fifth house, but yeah, in your seventh house of partnerships, I would say this card can sometimes represent delay. It's not to say it won't come in, and I mean, something really good is coming in Cancer. I don't know how else to tell you, but we like that message, right? So by all means, I am happy to relay it. Um, there's There has been for years, whether you know it or not, some intense energy happening throughout your long-term commitments. Uh, and that could manifest in a lot of different ways. That could manifest as you being seen as a force to be reckoned with, very powerful, very intense. Or it could be uh, sort of chaos and re rebuilding, destruction and rebuild. You have uh, the planet Pluto, which again represents death and birth, power, um, almost like very psychic, intuitive. Um, it's, it's related to Scorpio. So kind of intense, extreme, but also very... Very deep, very psychic, very spiritual energy that has been impacting your seventh house of partnership for years. That is specific to Cancer Rising because Pluto is a generational planet. So it doesn't necessarily impact you very fine tunely on an individualistic level. But because Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn, it's Pluto has been, you know, wreaking havoc, if you want to say, for all the zodiac signs, but in different areas of their life. So for Cancer Risings, it has been in your long-term partnership. So again, you could have seen a lot of death and birth. Um, and, and I don't mean in the literal sense, though certainly it could manifest that way. More the idea of Phoenix from the Ashes. You, you may have gotten back together with your exes a lot, or you may have gone through lots of relationships, but they end very quickly, or something of the sort. It doesn't have to be that. Or again, you may have established a lot of really strong powerful, powerful relationships uh, for the last, I would say, like, decade, a long time. <clears throat> this seems like you're waiting for something bigger to transform. It's, it, I'm almost getting this metaphor of, like, you're, you're waiting to be, like, the power couple or something. Um, I'm, I'm almost tempted to throw something on this, but I want to see what else I can get from the, the characters interacting here. <clears throat> Yeah, a lot of you, it feels like you've been waiting on a marriage proposal for a long time. Okay, because the universe may have been purposely holding this back, if, if you believe in this sort of thing, right? And I'm not ever trying to force any type of belief system on you, but almost like in uh, protecting you, I, I almost feel like the universe was holding back from getting in, you into a long-term relationship because there was something very unstable about your uh, work not ethic, you're, I think, taking on too much. I think this could have manifested as an obsession in the past, and so you had to find the right balance so that you weren't undertaking everything at work and then taking on all this responsibility in a relationship. With Sagittarius, again, kind of falling in that sixth house, there was a need for you to learn daily, I'm hearing the word rhythm, but yes, uh, daily, 
Oh, what is the word for it? Uh, I mean, moderation, balance, temperance, what, what Sagittarius stands for. You may view areas of your life as all or nothing or com complete obsession. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Just it's like when you get excited about something, you go gung ho. Some of you, of course, not all of you. And so there was a need for you to understand where you were almost uh, uh, deceiving yourself or playing tricks on yourself. What is a good word for it? Blocking your blessings um, because you were maybe all in in areas where universe was asking you to let other people help. I think that's really what I'm trying to say. And so something like that may have had to do with your partnerships, um, especially with a Capricorn. A lot of Capricorn and Virgo energy around this, maybe even a Pisces may be factoring into this, um, where yeah, it, there was a need for you to understand... Health, healthy balance and, and to pull yourself away from obsession if that had been a thing for you. And I don't even know if that's the correct word to use. Extremism, we could say it that way. Um, uh, an inability to delegate or an inability to uh, discern. Um, like there was no discrimination, all or nothing. Like, yes, I'll do all of this. Or, or I don't know, there was just something about finding the, the rhythm of that before universe had decided, okay, this now this relationship is ready to transform into something bigger because cancer, you understand healthier boundaries now. Okay, uh, let's talk about your dating life a little bit. You seem, uh, with the queen of wands in your house of self, there is a, a confidence in you right now. And I feel like I've been saying that to cancer for the last several months, which is great. I love to relay that message. And I know not all of you are necessarily feeling that way all the time, but with the queen of wands presenting, she's like a Psh, bitch, like that's queen of wands, right? And I'm not saying you're being that way, but there's a confidence. There's a poise to her where... She, I mean, as a fire sign, right, she's very blunt. She kind of says what she means and rarely is apologetic because she just felt, I would even say impulsively felt like that's just what needed to be said. I said it, right? Like there's a, there's a confidence to her and it, she doesn't bite her tongue. She doesn't hold her tongue. If anything, she may be a little bit extravagant with, with her stories, with her details. She may be extra showy because... And again, this is just in a, day, a weekly reading. There's something that she wants to be seen. She wants people to see her light. She is a light worker. She's incredibly spiritual, right? And it's not that those two can't go hand in hand. Um, but it's like she knows that there's big growth that is due to her coming in for her. And so she wants it. She goes out and she sells it, right? Um, she's the entertainer of the Zodiac. I always say very connected to Aries energy. So if any of my cancers have strong Aries in their chart, there's... There's a poise, there's a confidence, and it's so funny, I keep, I keep hearing, yeah, I said it. You may have said something maybe in, in a workplace that was very controversial, but you were like, you know what, you know, being, uh, or I'm sorry, being silenced or not saying what is actually going on, it's not helping me achieve any of my wishes, so I may as well say what I mean and mean what I say. Like, that's kind of like putting your foot down in a way that it doesn't necessarily offend people, but it's sort of this new this new side of cancer we haven't seen before, especially in the workplace or possibly in long-term partnerships. Even if you are married and, and the marriage is fine, there could be this, this new chapter of your life where it's like, I'm almost getting like you've just, you've matured into something uh, almost like a flower, like a flower that sort of its petals uh, open up. There's something about it where it, you're making your partner think. It's not in a bad way. It's not like, oh, do I want to be with cancer? It's not that at all. It's like this... There's a dreamy element to kind of Neptune, envision a new side of you or envision a new future with the two of you together, even in a business relationship. There's something about, yeah, you're, you're very, uh, I'm hearing the word pride, but in a good way. There's a, a there's pr uh, proud, I'm proud, pride, what is the way, good, good way of phrasing that? There's a pride, there's a confidence to you, and it's, people are seeing you differently, and I think they are surprised in a good way. Like, oh, you know, I never envisioned, you know, cancer stepping up to take on that new leadership role, but you know, I can kind of see it now. Yeah, and I, honestly, it's almost like you had to prove something to yourself before you were ready to show it to other people, but a lot of you, it seems like you're ready to show it to other people, and the universe is like, Atta, baby, there you go. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the universe is finally applauding you. Like, okay, cancer saw it in themselves, so now they're showing it to others, and People are liking it. Generally, the reception is good. And I mean, just, oh, these cards feel so good, Cancer. So good. All right, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about your dating life. 
you may be celebrating something among family, especially, okay, maybe Mother's Day, I was going to say, especially with your mother or something in the home. There could be some new project you completed in your home or about your residence. You could be reconnecting with just uh, people from your past. We have to remember Fourth House does have a, a strong connection to a, our past, our roots, our ancestry. But it, with this card, I think it's Mercury and Cancer, like very... Uh, warm discussions, uh, you know, speaking from the heart with your soul tribe, with your, your soul fam, even if it's not literal family, you could just be getting together with, with your people who feel like home, people who feel like family. Really strong vibes right now in your fourth house. I like that a lot. Um, and even more so when we move into Gemini season, there's going to be some trining energy between your uh, household and uh, sort of your 12th house. Interesting. Again, people from the past who maybe were uh, remaining hidden, they may come to light or again uh, participating in some sort of activity in your home that feels very spiritual or feels very artistic or feels like your way to communicate with the divine something about that especially connecting to your ancestry your roots your spirit guides something about that may be really highlighted especially uh, when we move into gemini season let me put these back in the right place and then okay so dating wah, wah. <laughs> all right hang with me cancer i'm not gonna leave you there <clears throat> uh, again, new opportunities for travel. Uh, Ace of Pentacles is a new gift, a new opportunity. Jupiter is moving into your house of travel. Jupiter in itself is a, very connected to travel and expansion and long term. Um, some of you may be spending money on your education or enrolling in some sort of new uh, course, but it may even involve uh, philosophy or religion or something. Um, yeah, something more educationally focused, expanding your mind, expanding your intellect. If it's not that, there could be travel opportunities. So let's see. Fifth house of creativity. You're either going through a phase of healing. This is also your dating and your sex life. Um, or you may be going through a week where you're feeling a little bit, oh, uncomfortable. What can I tell Cancer about this? What do you have helping you out here in this house? So Neptune is trining this house. So you may be living more in a dream world, but not actually practically building those relationships. And again, weekly, weekly readings. Um, so Mars is going to be helping you out, though. So, yeah, this might be temporary. Uh, Mars just moved into Cancer. I think I talked a little bit about this last week. It'll be there for about, I want to say Mars stays in a sign about a month, but someone can fact check me on that. Oh, yeah. See, look. OK, not all is lost. Mars is the planet of assertion, aggression. It also has with it a leadership, a pioneering, self-starter, um, entrepreneurial type vibe. Um, and it also is very much connected to sex and masculinity. So um, especially my cancers, male or female, interested in um, uh, male partnership. That could certainly be coming in because it is trining uh, your house of sex and, and dating. Uh, trining is a very positive aspect. We like trines. Um, and yeah, sex just may factor into this. I would say make sure, well, I'm not even going to say it this way. There is the potential for this to result in, I'm going to be honest, this is just what I'm hearing. Please don't get offended, but almost like pity sex. And here's the thing. I don't think it's someone doing it to you. I think you may be in between people and just like, I want to get in there and do it. And so you may end up doing it because you... I always like feel bad for yourself. Like it's been so long. I just want to get back in the game. So you may end up, even if it's not sex, just dating someone who you're not super into them, but you're like, eh, <laughs> like maybe once. <laughs> like like I'd, tap, I'd hit that. I'd tap that. That's how that could manifest. Or um, there's a couple different things here. If you're doing that, though, I would offer that if you are, and, and you, I, I'm not judging in terms of how you view dating. Some people are very happy doing like one night stands, hit it and quit it, or friends with benefits. That's like a really lovely way of putting it, right? It's, that's not a bad thing. It's just different. Some people want that. Some people don't. It's possible that if you're doing the friends with benefits, the person on the other end of this may be in too deep where they're actually getting feelings from you, but there's this uh shadow cast over it because they know that you're like nah like i'm good this is just like a well, kind of like a relationship by convenience so there's nothing wrong with that as long as you guys are on the same page and and this to me says somebody is not on the same page there three of swords can sometimes indicate that there are too many people involved even if it's not sleeping around it could just be that again I, I don't know why i'm just getting this like you're sleeping with someone but you're really holding out for someone else to call that's sort of what i get with this like you're not really all in it there's 
there's like a wedge being put in your dating life this week because it, it's complicated. There's possibly some wounds that need to be healed or just imbalances in, in, in relationships or in feelings. Give me one more on that. And that may even be causing confusion in your long-term partnerships. Again, with something with a Capricorn too. I can't quite tell if, it, if it's positive or negative. I think there's a Virgo who might be making an offer to you. What's the deal here? King of Pentacles. So is there a male earth sign factoring into this in some way? King of Pentacles makes great offers. Um, you know, in a low vibration, King of Pentacles is selfish. So if you're dating an earth sign who wants to have his cake and eat it too, or her, right? It could be a female. Maybe that's this. Maybe this is the person who's keeping you close, but only so close. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like there could be like a, you may be all in with this male earth sign and he's like, yeah, maybe, like maybe I'll let you know. But again, for a lot of you, it could be the opposite. This person could be someone who's investing a lot in you emotionally, romantically, but you're sort of keeping them a little bit, it's a little bit chilly, the vibe this week. I don't know how else to say it. Um, or again, there could be multiple offers. You could have a king and a knight, uh, two, two different people uh, making different energies. Or if you are this knight, do you see how you've almost passed by an offer that, it's not to say it was a bad offer, you just simply didn't want it or didn't have use for it in your life right now. So... I mean, Cancer, it is what it is. Your reading says to me that there might, there's very likely someone approaching you romantically, but I don't, I just don't think you're that interested. Or you have options and you're struggling to decide which one. Um, and you know, if you have options, it's not the worst case scenario, but something about this seems to be distressing you. And very likely, because my Cancers tend to, in a higher, vibra higher vibration, be very sympathetic and very compassionate, it, as much as it is to, uh, as great to as, sorry, as great as it is to have options, you may be feeling uh, really almost sick to your stomach because you don't want to lead someone on, but you don't know how to break it off with them. I, I could see that happening too. So <clears throat> look for travel opportunities coming up. And what else do I need to tell you? You may be communicating more with a sibling uh, or uh, settling a score. There could be a victory with your siblings or, or, or news uh, important news coming to you from a sibling, possibly a job offer too. Um, uh, especially if you work in business, there could be a new job offer coming to you. Um, your, your house of friendships. And again, your, uh, long-term hopes and dreams and wishes, even your, um, uh, online presence, groups of people, there's major transformation and action happening there, but it's not all bad, but it's, it's, you may have to restructure things again, especially for a lot of you to make better habits of your daily health routine. Um, it could be, you've been spending too much time online and your body is just like, I need exercise, babe. Like that kind of thing. There's something about there's, there's major transformation happening in this area of your life. Uh, large groups of people, friendship groups, online presence, and it does have to do with long-term dreams and wishes. Um, let's go around the Zodiac and do quick love readings, uh, especially if you're dating, but you can choose to view it through, you know, a family dynamic. I'm going to give you a card on each Zodiac sign, and we will wrap it up. Cancer, it looks like you're crushing it at work. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you relate to that message. And make sure you uh, enter your name in the contest to win a free tarot reading from me. There's uh, information on how to do that at the end of this video if you click on the timestamp, okay? All right, if Cancer is dealing with another Cancer, in fact, hold on, let's split the deck. Oh, I see three of cups. Three of cups and the devil. All right, so a reunion with a Capricorn or a celebration with a Capricorn. Meeting through friends of friends, especially your Cancer friend. We'll see. All right, here we go. We're going to split the deck. Here we go. Cancer with a cancer. Tell me about this. Five of cups. Okay, so something has been lost, but what's what's the deal? Tell me a little bit more. What is the two of cups? What are the cups remaining? The king of pentacles. Okay, so something with an earth sign might pan out. If you've been waiting on a cancer and it seems murky or foggy or they, I don't know, something with a, a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn may be factoring into this. It could be because this person is already married. That's possible. They already have a husband. Um, or again, you're going to be presented with a new offer from a king of pentacles. It's almost like don't cry over spilled milk because you got a ba way better offer coming. Um, if this is someone you're married to, if this is already your husband and you guys had a fight, again, you can bridge the gap if, if you so desire. If you're dealing with a Leo, uh, they're defensive right now. They're not, they're not putting themselves out there. If you are dealing with a Gemini, nope. If you're dealing with a Virgo, <laughs> this Virgo is playing some games, 
but I think there's a buoyancy and a lightheartedness to their spirit that you kind of like. Um, or this Virgo may have trouble taking risks with new people. They, they have this person, uh, well, Virgo, very class, uh, sorry, calculated. There's something about, they can only get in too deep and then they get comfortable and they kind of draw back a little bit. So I don't know, this one's confusing. But it, it's two of cups, so there's potential there. I think this person takes time to get to know you. It takes them time to open up. If you are dealing with a Libra, uh, your Libra may have options, um, uh, with another Libra, or they might be married and juggling you with someone else. Um, or you could be doing that, right? If you're dealing with a Scorpio, the star, wish fulfillment. If you're dealing with a Sagittarius, um, they're holding on to whatever they currently have. So if they have an ex, they're holding on to their ex. If they just enjoy being single and playing the field, they're holding on to that. Um, they may actually be trying to save money right now. Uh, and I don't know what that factors into it. If you're already with a Sagittarius and madly in love, they may be looking at land or property. Uh, to, in terms of in, possibly including you too. Um, I, I, the thing with the Sagittarius, if you're already kind of involved, it's going to stay the same. So you will continue to be kind of involved. If you're dealing with a Capricorn, transformation or endings, I feel like this is heavy hearted though. This death card, it's, uh, this is so emo, punk, goth. Like, I don't know what it is. He looks like, I always, uh, like, you remember when heroin chic was a thing in the 90s? Something about this. It looks like a, a man wearing, like, black goth makeup. And I, I don't know, like, someone, that even seems kind of Capricorn-esque to me, too. There's, like, a, my soul is so dark, you don't understand me. Temperance. Yeah, I, I, this person might quite literally be, um, just under the weather or feeling moody, feeling emotional. And so it's like they have to, they have to immerse themselves in wellness. They have to rebalance out their life. This person may be all or nothing in terms of relationships. And so I would say this, the fact that death, AKA something is changing and transforming is being met with temperance, which is very angelic. It's very focused on healing and wellness. Something in this needs to be healed, but it's not a lost cause. It could be a Capricorn from your past is coming back or maybe something with a Sagittarius or a Scorpio is coming in between you guys. I don't know what this is. This could be a lot of things. Uh, if you're dealing with an Aquarius, the Three of Pentacles, they probably want to build with you. Um, but they're not showing face. They're like, I think this person questions if... Uh, they're very in their head. Aquarius, classic. They're not trying to show how much they like you or vice versa. Or they're trying to forget about you, but their mind goes back to you. What's the deal there? Nine of Cups, yeah, I don't know. I think, there's a couple messages here. I think in a sense, one person is investing a lot in the other, and the other one is like, I'm interested, like I'm intrigued, but the other person's like, oh, I hope they call me. So the level of feelings are not in the same place, but there's the potential for you guys to build together if you could get on the same page. For some of you, it's reversed. For some of you, this Aquarius is really interested in you and they're waiting and waiting and waiting and they keep checking their phone to see if you're going to call them. Um, with the Pisces, yeah, match made in heaven. I actually really like that. Um, uh, you both are very in your head about each other. So if you haven't expressed the, the interest or asked them out, you might as well because I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, Four of Swords, you're, you're thinking about it, you're dreaming about them, the person is, is dreaming about you. Yeah, especially the Pisces is dreaming about you, even it may be a reconciliation with the Pisces. If you're dealing with an Aries, uh, they haven't decided yet, it's it's in limbo, it's, uh, it's hangman mode. So it's like they're trying to envision what it would be like to be with you. Um, if you are dealing with a Taurus, Eight of Pentacles, they're probably really busy with work right now. Um, they're really focused on their money. If you're already with a Taurus, they may actually be saving to buy you something or present you with some sort of gift or token or present, especially Mother's Day, right? If, you're, if your husband or whoever is a, your husband or wife is a Taurus. Um, but yeah, I, honestly, I think there's movement and passion with the Taurus. There will be. It might be slow to start, but I think that will ramp, uh, uh, vamp up or is that, or, you know what I'm trying to say. It will increase. There will be something good. And last but not least, if you're dealing with a Gemini, ooh, three of swords, what's with that? Something that's requiring healing, um, sexual healing. That's what I get with this. The three of swords and the, the strength card. You're due for sexual healing. Or didn't I say that earlier? There was something over here too about like, not, I said pity sex, which wasn't the right terminology, but there's something about coming together and like makeup sex. Makeup sex is what's, what's going on with the Gemini. So, all right, Cancer Risings and Cancer people, everybody who joined this reading, thank you so much. I'm so happy you came by uh, my channel today. Remember to like the video, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already and click on the timestamp if you want to know how to enter a contest for the free tarot reading. I will see you next Monday for more tarot. Bye, guys.
What's up guys? This is a friendly reminder to submit your name if you are looking to uh, throw in a submission to the win a free tarot reading from me, The Intuitive Teacup. There will be three winners announced on May 9th and in order to submit your entry, I am asking that you leave a comment on any video of your choice here on my channel. It has to be one of my videos. Uh, listing the three qualities you admire most about yourself, three qualities you find very likable or desirable, three things that you're proud of about yourself. Uh, so loyalty, trustworthy, creative, funny, compassionate, any of those things, uh, it's up to you. Uh, leave those three descriptor words and next to it I want you to include the hashtag Team Teacup. Uh, that's just simply to let me know that you're entering your name for the competition and not just leaving a random comment. Um, so yeah, that is what you're being asked to do. One comment is one submission. You can submit as many times as you would like, aka leave as many comments as you want. They can be the same descriptors, different ones. That's entirely up to you. Um, so there will be three winners. Uh, if you are a winner, I will comment on your comment as well as announce your name on my channel and my Instagram. From there, we will message privately and you will be allowed to submit one question you would like me to answer. And that's that. It's pretty easy, pretty basic. Of course, if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do that. It really does help me. Um, and I welcome you to join me over on Instagram because that was sort of the brainchild of this uh, contest anyway. I reached a thousand subs on Instagram, which is great. I love interacting with you guys there. and It allows me to do things here on YouTube that I can't. So welcome you to follow me over there or on Facebook. It's not uh, necessary. It's not required to enter the competition but you do need to submit to my YouTube channel or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, all right, that's about it. So I look forward to announcing the winner Sunday, May 9th. So make sure you enter before then.